Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today I'm taking a look at the DA65 Battle Convoy VMAX from the Diaclone Reboot line. You may be watching this sometime later, but as of right now, this guy has just been released. Uh, and while it wasn't really my intention for this channel to try and cover new releases specifically, uh, this one is definitely something special. So I was determined to get this out fairly quickly um, to share him with you. So why is he so special? Um, well, first and foremost, he's Optimus Prime. Uh, technically, no, it's not, but we all know it's true. Obviously, you can see the resemblance, but as the Diaclone lineage goes, the original Diaclone Battle Convoy figure from 1981 was the G1 Prime toy and basis for the character. Remember, the toys came before the cartoons. Now that Takara Tomy rebooted the Diaclone line, this is the updated, reimagining version of that toy. So while some may consider it blasphemous to say so, um, as far as I'm concerned, this is definitely Optimus Prime. The second reason that this toy is kind of a big deal is that he's brought a lot of interest into the Diaclone reboot line, uh, myself included. I'd seen bits and pieces of it here and there, but it never really grabbed me enough to really take notice of what the line was about. Um, but then my kids and I saw this video. Yeah, I think we watched it about 20 times back to back, even with that horrible uh, metal soundtrack that the Japanese seem to love so much. So this guy has brought a lot of Transformers collectors into the Diaclone reboot line, which can only be a really good thing, uh, as Diaclone is a very niche product for Takara Tomy by their own admission. If you dig into interviews with the design team, it seems like just a handful of people in the supply cupboard uh, in the Takara office tower. So the more people buying them, the more releases we'll see. Before I dive into this guy, I want to really quickly talk about the Diaclone line and what makes it so unique. So if you're not new to Diaclone, you might want to jump ahead. I do want to do a Diaclone reboot overview video at some point, but for now, the best way to quickly describe the line is Transformers meets Lego um, in a sci-fi context. So to explain, the Transformers bit is fairly obvious. Um, Diaclone, for all intents and purposes, gave birth to Transformers. Um, big robots that transform into alternate modes. The sci-fi setting is that the Diaclone troops are a global force set up to protect Earth against invading aliens known as the Waruda. Um, they kind of resemble bugs and, and monsters, a bit organic but also mech-based. Um, so it's more sci-fi than Transformers and unlike Transformers there's a very clear good guys and bad guys um, that look quite different. Uh, kind of think of it as Earth robots versus alien robots. And the LEGO component is what really makes the line uh, as it's very modular in the sense that you can take parts from all the different mechs and mash them together to kind of make your own creations. So there's certain ways that bits can go together. Um, you can't just build anything, um, but in a way that kind of makes it better as well because um, you can be playing with something for weeks and months um, and then discover something new 
um, that, that gives you all these new options. So often it's my kids who discover new ways to integrate parts, um, as I guess I'm somewhat kind of trained into how things should kind of connect together. Um, whereas they just go for it and have fun and just, you know, connect everything together. And that's probably a good place to mention um, the Diaclone reboot line is pretty expensive. Um, it's not just price gouging though. Um, they're pretty small run toys made essentially just for the Japanese market. Um, there's insane engineering, um, huge part counts and really, really tight tolerances to make it all kind of work together the way it does. And all of that adds up to dollar signs. I do let my kids play with them, um, supervised of course, uh, but I also hold my breath the whole time. So now you have a bit more of an idea about what makes this toy line so special, let's take a look at Diaclone DA65 Battle Convoy VMAX. The box for this guy is very substantial, nice big imagery on the front and an insane amount of info on the back showing you his various modes. You could spend ages just enjoying the box without even opening it up. Once you do though, it is disappointing to see that a lot of the packaging is just filler. In Japan where these guys are intended to be sold, it's not such a big deal as it's a relatively small place with an efficient logistics network. But for those of us outside Japan, it's a pretty cruel and expensive exercise to be shipping just empty space. When you do get past all the cardboard, it still feels kind of sterile, um, particularly if you're new to the Diaclone line and are used to opening a new box and seeing a robot staring back at you. Um, with Battle Convoy, you don't necessarily get that instant gratification. Um, you have to work for it a little bit. But going back to the whole Lego aspect and the open creativity of the line, um, obviously this guy has a suggested robot mode and he has a handful of suggested or designed in vehicle modes. But the point is that these can just be jumping off points um, for your own imagination and how you combine bits and pieces with other sets to create insane and unique robots and vehicles and bases. So there's a ton in there, uh, robot and vehicle parts, Dynaut figures, weapons and playset diorama items, plus the manuals and booklets, decals, and magnet sheets, which I'll go into later. Instruction booklets in the Diaclone line aren't amazing. Um, there's a ton of work put into them, and I can't expect them not to be in Japanese, um, but they're black and white, and they're often very hard to make out as there's so much detail packed into each tiny little diagram. Uh, and they leave a lot out in terms of the playability options too. That's more due to the fact that there's often so many things to discover um, and ways that these figures can interconnect and combine that it would be practically impossible to do so. So it's definitely recommended to think of the instruction book as a starting off point um, rather than a conclusive guide. Unless you're literally gonna put everything back in the blister uh, every time you finish playing with it or display it on a shelf permanently, my suggestion would be to get yourself uh, some divided storage. So fishing tackle boxes are ideal and that's what I use. Um, so then you can keep it all organized and all in one place. I'll go through what each of these things are and some ideas for how you can incorporate them later on. But again, if you want to skip ahead, there should be chapter links in the description below. So you get just a pair of Dynault figures in the set, um, which feels kind of stingy given that uh, many of the earlier, less substantial sets come with three or even four of them. This is very much a playset piece and gives you the most opportunity to use the figures out of any previous set in the line. Um, not to mention that it's also one of the most expensive in the line. So I'd really like to have seen at least one, if not two of these guys extra in the box. The colors are nice, but also a bit middle of the road with the light and dark blue full helmet molds. You also don't get a bike either, which was one of the things that made the earlier releases in the line so great. Even if you just got a single robot figure, you got a few Dynauts and a bike to play with, and it just opened up the fun a bit more. Of course, there's more figure sets you can buy with bikes, but I can't help but feel Takara Tomia skimping a bit here. Jumping to the two main mech components, straight out of the box, we have two vehicle modes pretty much ready to go. In the flight combat machine, um, also called the Max Zero One, and the driving combat machine, uh, codenamed Max Zero Two. You just need to flip out a few panels, put a dyno pilot in a cockpit module, or bullet core as they're awkwardly translated, and you're off and playing. The Max Zero One probably feels a bit more finished uh, as a cool kind of gunship type thing, um, but the Max Zero Two is really just a flatbed basically. So you can introduce the absolute cyclone cannon, um, as they call it, the accessory which is designed to act as your choice of either a kind of missile system, or it could be a mech storage slash repair, or a vehicle launching platform. But essentially the Max-02 seems kind of half finished, so it feels like you either want to combine the two, um, which they call the MAV, or multiple attack vehicle, uh, which is essentially the equivalent to the Optimus Prime cab mode, or introduce some other sets uh, and make it like a transporter or freighter. One small but important detail for me is that the wheels are plastic um, and not rubber, which I hate. But I understand that plastic lasts a lot longer than rubber and it's cheaper and easier to make. 
um, but rubber will always feel more premium um, and it's just so much nicer to have on figures so it's a shame that they didn't do that here. I'm going to save combinations and stuff with other figures and sets for later on in the video um, as I want you to understand what you can do with just this guy out of the box um, so there's no misunderstanding of what's included and what's not. So in this truck cab mode we bring in the trailer and you can see the kind of Optimus Prime on the moon kind of vibe you get going on. And you can store various vehicles or ships inside the trailer. They call this the scramble link mode. While G1 Prime was more about being covert and looking like an everyday truck, this guy is clearly all about killing aliens and getting the job done as you can see. To be honest, this look is not my favorite. Um, and if the truck and trailer thing is a bit too retro, you can split the cab again and then the Max 01 part slots into the trailer front here, which is referred to as the Battle Mothership Rhino Grander mode. Uh, don't ask me about the name, but this mode makes a lot more sense for me uh, in the context of actually fighting aliens. You can imagine if the trailer was stationed on the battlefront lines or whatever, and then your ship can fly in and attach and drive away instead of having to drive in and kind of hook up a tow rig. In this configuration, the Max 02 can also be stored inside the trailer ready for action, so it's reasonably compact. Now, if we look at the trailer itself, which is referred to as the container machine or pod grander, you can already see that this has almost like a cheese plate style structure um, with holes and ports all over it, just begging for customization. The highlight being the control room kind of pod type thing here. I know you're probably getting tired of names, but they call this the DFO or Direct Flying Orbiter. Now, while we're in trailer mode, it's a bit limited in what it can do. Um, we've seen the two ways which the robot parts can effectively combine to, to tow it um, and how we can store vehicles inside it. And later I'll show you how it can be customized and extended um, with more sets. But outside of that, the only other play mechanic is the cool bike storage um, that was featured in the CG video I showed you earlier. So you can store a bike in each tank tread piece, um, which is a nice little detail and shows how the Diaclone designers really do consider every little section um, to maximize the playability of the set. The trailer itself is also really modular, so you can take off the front and back panels um, if you want, and you can take off, take off the ramps and mount them to the front. Um, you can even kind of cut it in half and um, have like a single pod, mini pod setup. Now the fun really begins when we open this guy up into the base mode. Um, with just a few clips, we can go to a full blank canvas that's about 25 by 30 centimeters full of more ports to um, set stuff up and create really whatever you want using the accessories that um, come with this guy. If you're new to the Diaclone line, there's just two sizes that everything uses. Uh, I think it's a three mil and a four mil. Um, but the point is almost any accessory from any Diaclone set should be compatible here. Also, I've seen some third-party stuff and even people 3D printing their own little furniture pieces, uh, which is really cool to see. Up one end, we have the DFO unit, and now that the trailer's opened up, there's a few cool things we can do with this guy. Firstly, we can bring the cockpit down to floor level so the pilots can climb in. It just slides up and down on rails. Or you can lift the clips at the sides, and if you press this red button kind of hidden on the front, um, which I always struggle getting to, you can raise it up to a watchtower kind of mode. It spins around here and the sides extend out, so you can set it up in a number of ways as you can see. Then as you saw in the earlier CG video, it can clip off completely and become its own ship to fly around in. And with it unclipped, you can see it has a really fantastic retro vibe. Uh, I don't know if it's the shape combined with like the orange windshield that gives me the feeling, um, but it does certainly seem like something that could have been in the original Diaclone line. It's not exactly a secret, but one discovery that you can make is that you can also unclip the gray attachment piece under it and use that as a clip to mount him onto mech legs and other cool stuff. Cool little finds like this are pretty regular in the Diaclone line and Battle Convoy here has quite a few of them. So now you've got this blank canvas, it's time to crack out all the accessories in the box to set up your choice of layouts, whether it's a command HQ, an attack station, missile defense, repair bays, warehouse and storage, or any combination of those. Here I'm showing configurations with just what's included in the box. But later, as promised, I'm excited to show you what's possible if you have some additional sets and accessories. As a salute to the original Battle Convoy and pretty much all the G1-inspired Optimus Prime toys since, you can also mount the trailer in a vertical orientation if you like, which makes a fantastic display to showcase the mech. We looked at the Absolute Cyclone Cannon before for attaching to the Max O2 flatbed, but here it can be connected directly to the base by just rotating its connecting ports underneath. And now you have the same choice of missile launcher, mech repair station, or vehicle launch pad as you had on the back of the truck. The mech repair station is probably the most fun and it features these little tools that pop out from underneath. As yet another throwback detail, the round item is a reference to the Henshin Cyborg CS1 playset, which is a very deep dive into the Takara archives, but amazing to see these almost Easter egg kind of things that the designers have included for fans. 
In terms of the smaller play accessories, there's quite a bit uh, and it can be a bit confusing at first to work out what's what, so I'll go through each of them quickly. You get a total of six computer workstations, two upright standing terminals and four sit down. And these sit down styles are in two different configurations. The first is a straight connection so you can place them side by side and the second is a corner terminal. You get two of each style. It's another really nice detail to have these variants and it just makes for so many more options than if it was one workstation design. Next up are these crane and truss props. You get bits to assemble two cranes, um, but these are also modular so they can be set up individually as one long truss. Because the crane attachment is a four millimeter port, this also means you can essentially plug in anything here in the place of a clamp. There's two of these bike platforms, so you can press them in and then mount two bikes on each. I found the placement for these a little quirky though. I felt like I couldn't mount these in many places other than bang in the middle of a section um, so they feel like they take up more room than they should. I'd love to fit four onto one side of a pod uh, and based on the physical size they should but the mounting points don't support it unfortunately. Next we have the RAID chamber attachments and these allow you to quickly and easily mount either the powered or manoeuvre series RAID chambers for warehousing or transport. There's six of these, four dark grey and two red. And similarly, we get the same amount of these clips, which are for the cockpit modules, or bullet core as they're called, or verse riser suits, which are the third type of small mech in the Diaclone line. Not so much an accessory, but there's also a few pod clips for expansion if you get more sets. And lastly, we get four of these mezzanine levels that can clip onto the side walls and allow you to expand your base upwards. They feature a couple of ports in the floor and one in the middle of the railing, so plenty of customizing options there. You'll also notice the black strips running along the floor and ramps of the trailer, which are the magnet stickers so that the Dynault pilots can stick. I mentioned earlier the manual isn't great at times and with these there's no clear indication of what goes where, um, so I've just highlighted that there for you based on the photos and the booklets. There's some flexibility but I would recommend going with the suggested layout. I also recommend just running around the edge of the magnets with an X-Acto knife or razor before peeling them out um, as sometimes they can flex a little bit and they're not always great at going back into shape. While some of them are a perfect flush fit, I did find certain panels were about a millimeter too long um, which isn't the end of the world but still disappointing with a toy line that puts so much emphasis on these really minuscule details. When you're done applying the decals, don't throw the excess away. I definitely suggest cutting four 16 mm squares to go in the center of the mezzanine pieces, which will allow you to easily mount Dianort pilots on there. I'm surprised this wasn't uh, included as there's an indent on the floor ready for it. It's as though it was left out of the first production run somehow, as you definitely see them there in the booklet photos. But you might also want to make other custom stickers later, so it's best to just keep the offcuts aside with your manuals and stuff. Okay, so that kind of wraps up the nuts and bolts of the base portion. As I said, we'll take a look at what we can do and how that expands dramatically if you have more Diaclone sets available. But for now, I want to take a look at the robot mode and instantly there's no mistaking it. Uh, you could show this to a kid anywhere in the world and they know it's Optimus Prime in some sense. He's got the familiar red torso on blue legs and the unmistakable blue head with faceplate mouth. He's about 18 centimeters tall, so almost exactly the size of the Dire Battles V2 uh, and a bit bigger than the Triverse range. Being completely plastic, there's nothing uh, spectacular in terms of in-hand weight, but in terms of sculpt, posability and playability, um, I don't think you could ask for more. His head is really well detailed. As I said, the classic prime mouth plate combined with light piping for the eyes and great paint application all over with the navy and metallic red and just little touches of golden yellow. Even this tiny spark of metallic green on his forehead, it's so well done, there's no bleed uh, and it just pulls your eye straight in. Every panel on his body has highly detailed molding and he's got a great bulky yet dynamic look to him ready to go head on into battle and certainly has the firepower to do so. He's got rifles, shoulder cannons and similar to Battle Buffalo and Big Powered he has these bays that uh, open up with an array of missiles ready to fire. A nice detail is that his guns can also clip onto his hips too um, but I think these are one of the few areas where Takara Tomi could have delivered more. They're a nice sculpt but a tiny bit of paint detail would have gone a long way. Also a salute to G1 Optimus Prime's rifle feels like a bit of a missed opportunity to get really nostalgic. There's 4mm ports at the end though, so you can add all sorts of bayonet attachments depending on what you have in your collection. Um, but even these uh, shoulder cannons from the front make a great upgrade. Speaking of customization and upgrades, there's a decent number of ports on his body, uh, under his forearms, on his shoulders, on his back and legs. Um, gives you a massive opportunity to customize him. I haven't really dug deep enough yet, but even his head plate is on uh, a bit of a standard kind of knuckle piece. So in theory that may fit onto existing or future mech releases. 
While the suggested cockpit module in his chest from the instruction manual and all the imagery is this blue one, you can definitely swap it out for the red one which gives him dual chest cannons. Articulation wise, he's really versatile. You can pull off a huge number of poses. Probably the only limitation I've run into is a head tilt. He can look up a little, but not down. It doesn't really affect playability, um, but if you like to take photos and stuff of your figures, it makes it hard to get a good angle from a down low kind of pose looking up at him. Now I'm not a prolific Prime collector or anything uh, like that, but I wanted to show him here with my original G1 Prime from my childhood, just for nostalgia's sake. He's not in the best condition, but as this guy is pretty much an exact copy of the original Diaclone Battle Convoy, it's nice to see the evolution. And here he is with MP10 and MP44 from the Masterpiece line, so you get an idea of scale, and also see a few of the flagship representations of one of the world's most iconic robots. Okay, so that kind of wraps up what's in the box. Uh, as you saw, there's already a ton of stuff you can do with this guy by himself. I want to say more than any individual release in the Diaclone line so far. But when combining with other figures and sets, the possibilities just explode exponentially. While you can kind of use any Diaclone accessory, there's a few specific releases that are intended to tie in with Battle Convoy. And that's DA64 and DA70. Technically the DA62 Dynaut set is the official one for this, um, but it's just four Dynauts and a combat bike. So you could say the same about any Dynaut set. I do want to say it's a bit cheeky of Takara Tomy to distribute accessories for Battle Convoy as bundles with other products though. So for example, DA64 is a simple repaint of a couple of previously released powered suits, but then they include some individual chairs and cannons that, while they work across the entire line, are obviously intended for Battle Convoy. There's six seats in this set, same as the ones you get with Battle Convoy, but just a lighter coloured grey. Then the cannons and other bits are all repaints of uh, the ones that come with Big Powered Destroyer. DA70 bundles another pair of repaints with a set of the same terminals that you get with Battle Convoy. Two of the standing, two each of the tabletop style, all with chairs plus two single spare chairs, as well as other turret cannons that are repaints of the DA19 mold. These are probably the best turret style weapons in the Diaclone range in my opinion, as they have a little flip out piece to mount a Dynaut gunner, so they go great mounted on top of the trailer. Then they're offering single pod expansion units that don't have a DA series model number, but that one includes one trailer pod, plus stands, pod clips, and a few of the crane accessories. Honestly, I would much rather they do just a straight battle convoy accessory set, or maybe do two styles of pod expansion sets, one with all the weaponry and another with the base play accessories. If you are looking to expand beyond what you get in the box though, a better option possibly is just to get a second complete battle convoy set, and then you have twice the accessories and twice the play area. With four pod units, you can now choose to expand your trailer and base lengthwise to make a massive long hangar or mobile warehouse that's long enough to incorporate even a big powered. Or using four millimeter adapters, which come in many Diaclone sets, you can join the two trailers side by side to make a big base split into two sections. So now you can have one as a command and repair center and the other as a weapons and storage, for example, or however you want to set them up. But as you can see, there's even more playability as you expand. You can even mount the second trailer on top to create an enclosed base, mounting parts from the ceiling. I'm not a huge fan and it's definitely got a claustrophobic feel, but it is possible. So as promised before, if we then open the floodgates and bring in anything from the Diaclone universe, you can see it just really takes off. Here are a few of the creations that my kids and I built using either Battle Convoy and building onto its parts, or taking parts from Battle Convoy to augment other creations. His arms are compatible with the earlier releases in the line. So that's Dire Battles, Big Powered, Battle Buffalo, and his torso and legs feature the connectivity from the Triverse subline. So he kind of bridges all the figures in the range, which is really, really cool. I mentioned a few minor areas where I think this figure could be improved, but overall this really is an incredible toy. Um, for me, it would be impossible for this not to be toy of the year. Um, I would even have this down as my toy of the decade, to be honest. It really is so phenomenal in terms of play value, especially if you have some other sets to combine it with. Now, $250 to $300 is a lot for a plastic toy, don't get me wrong, but I honestly think that this is a toy that not only will my kids play with, but I think my kids' kids eventually might play with this. Um, it really is that good, and if you aren't too rough with it, it should definitely last that long. Just do yourself a favor and have a storage system so you don't lose any of the parts. If you do want to pick one of these guys up outside of Japan, you'll need to order from a specialist retailer. For some regions, Amazon Japan will ship direct. Otherwise, I recommend Robot Kingdom, who are based in Hong Kong. They stock each set in the range as it's released. They usually are a little bit cheaper even than Amazon Japan, and their service is pretty good. But depending on when you watch this, you might no longer be able to buy this at retail. Um, in the five year history of the modern Diaclo line, Takara Tomy haven't reissued any figures at all. So once it's sold out, it's sold out. In that case, I recommend having a look at Yahoo Auctions Japan via a proxy service like Bai, 
for Mandarake, which is a chain of toy resale stores in Japan that has an English website and ships internationally. I wouldn't recommend eBay as a first stop though, as it's usually just people looking to resell at inflated prices. Now while Takara Tomi are unlikely to reissue this guide, they will almost certainly release at least one repainted variant in the next 12 to 18 months, um, which is likely to have different or expanded accessories, so if you can't get this version at retail, there may be an alternate available. It seems very likely they'll do a black and red version and it would be really cool to see a green kind of camo version um, to fit in with the Cosmo Marine variants within the line. Okay, I hope that you've enjoyed taking a look at the Diaclone Battle Convoy VMAX with me. I know it was a long one, but I really wanted you to see how good this set is and the almost uh, unlimited potential for playability that it holds. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please post below. Uh, and if you want to catch upcoming reviews and videos, feel free to subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.